Hello there! Thank you for clicking into my channel. I prepare videos to help my students score in their STPM SAM 2 paper. I hope this video are helpful for you too. In this video, we are going to talk about parametric differentiation. When we differentiate any equation with parameter, most of the time we are going to need dy dx equals to dy dt times dt dx. This formula, we consider it as the chain rule. So we will be using lots of it in our video this time. Let's look at the first question. In this question, the parameter given here is t. So they are, have applied the t into x and y. So when to solve this parametric equation, what we have to do is, we are going to do our dx dt, differentiate uh, x to t. And we are going to deal with dy dt where we have uh, 4t squared plus 2 so we differentiate that with the power rule and we will get 8t then we are going to combine them into our chain rule where we have dy over dt times dt over dx now take note this is dt over dx the one that we differentiated just now is dx over dt. So we need to alternate this to fix it into the chain rule. So let's put it in. Now, dy over dt, we get it as just now. So we are going to put it that in. And dx over dt is 60 squared. But we need dt over dx where we need to alternate this so this is 1 over 60 squared we are going to simplify this and we will get 4 over 3t that's all easy right now of course this is easy for question that we have a simple parametric equation now during exam you might not get something this simple so when the equation is simple, you can actually skip the x dt and dy dt. But if the equation, the parametric equation that they give you are very, very complicated or it's complicated, for example, you have a product rule or a quotient rule needed to solve that question, I suggest you separate them out you will do your dx dt and dy dt separately before you put them into the chain rule sometimes dx dt and dy dt carries marks during stpm so please be careful if can just separate them up just in case during exam that dx dt and dy dt carry some marks In my second question, I have x equals to 3 over t and y equals to square root of 1 plus t squared. Now for x, before I deal with it, I will need to bring the index, uh, the t uh, up and the index change to negative 1 so that I can differentiate this easily. So I get dx dt, I will get negative 3 because the index will come to the front. So multiplied by negative 1, multiplied by 3, I get negative 3. And t index minus 1, I get negative 2. For the second part, I need to use the differentiation of composite function. If you have not seen my differentiation of composite function video, I will link it below. Check it out later. Differentiating dy dt, I will get index to the front, copy the brackets, 1 plus t squared, index minus 1, so 1 over 2 minus 1, I get negative 1 over 2, and differentiate all the elements inside the bracket, I get 2t. Simplify this, and I will get 
t multiplied by 1 plus t squared to the power of negative 1 over 2. I'm going to combine it into the, the chain rule now. That will give me, copy all this, dy dt here. And remember, I need dt over dx, which means my dx over dt, I will need to write it as t squared over negative 3. It's time to simplify. So t times t squared, I get negative t cubed, where this negative will go up. And 3 over, this is a negative, so this whole set is going to come down. And the power of 1 over 2 is actually square root. So my answer is done. Is it right? Let's check out this question. Now, this question will need your quotient rule to help you differentiate. So let's have a look at it. What we are going to do here is we are going to do the fill this quotient rule. Now, we have v, which is 1 minus t, so I will copy that down. Then, the u over dx, u will be on top here, 1 plus 2t. Differentiate 1 plus 2t, I will get 2. Minus u, so u is 1 plus 2t, I will copy that down. And dv over dx will be negative 1. So, I will write it there. Then, followed by v squared which is 1 minus t squared. When everything is done, I'm going to arrange everything and expand and simplify. So uh, my dx dt is ready. Let's have a look at dy dt. You can pause this video and apply the quotient rule and check your answer later. Okay, let's look at it. I'm not going to explain this over again. So I have explained it during the xdt. So I'm just going to run through the answer. Okay, once my dx dt and dy dt is ready, I'm going to put them into the chain rule. So dy dt is 3 over 1 minus 2t squared. Dx dt, just now I got 3 over 1 minus t squared. So I need dt over dx, so I alternate it, so I can simplify the equation now. Okay, so that's the answer. Nothing else you can do from here. In this question, I have the parameter combined with a trigonometry. So if you have not seen the trigonometry video, I will link it below. Please check it out later. Now for my trigo, I have x equals to 3 cos t, where the parameter is still t, and the y will be 4 sine t. For dx dt, I'm going to use the trigonometric differentiation formula, where I differentiate cos x, I'm going to get negative sine x. So dx dt is going to be negative 3 sine t, because the parameter is t for this time. Now, for the second one, y equals to 4 sine t, I'm going to need the formula for differentiation of sine x. So differentiate sine x, I will get cos x. So when I differentiate 4 sine t, I'm going to get 4 cos t. Got it? Now, it's time to put them together inside the chain rule. So I have my dy dt is 4 cos t and my dt over dx is 1 over this dx dt. So I have 1 over negative 3 sine t. Once that is done, I need to simplify this equation. So you know that sine theta over cos theta is equal to tangent theta but I have cos t over sine t here. So the 1 over tangent, I will get cotangent t. So I will write 4 over negative 3 cotangent t. 
That's all for my answer. Super easy, right? Yes. Now, the, this next question, I have 2 equals to 2 bracket 1 minus cos 2 theta. Now, I'm going to use the cos fx equals to negative sine fx formula, the differentiation of cos with a function. And I'm going to differentiate the function and put it at the side. Now, what will happen is I will have differentiation of dx over d theta. Do you notice that the parameter this time is theta? So dx over d theta, differentiate 1, I get 0. Like any other number, when you differentiate, you get 0. And then differentiate cos 2 theta, I will get negative sine 2 theta. So negative, negative, I will get a positive here. Then I will need to differentiate 2 theta. So I differentiate 2 theta, just like I differentiate 2x, I will get a number. Now please be careful here, because if you put the f prime x, which is the differentiation of the function for cos at the side, Please do not multiply this into the sine 2 theta. This is a number supposed to be in front of sine 2 theta. So I will get this. So 2 times 2, I will get 4 sine 2 theta. So I will get my equation as 4 sine 2 theta. For y, I have 2 multiplied with 2 theta minus sine 2 theta. So, the formula that I'm going to need here is sine fx equals to f prime x cos fx. So, which means it will be, okay, differentiate 2 theta, I will get 2, minus differentiate sine 2 theta, I will get cos 2 theta. So, I will write that cos 2 theta. Differentiate 2 theta. I will get 2. I will write there. And again, please do not multiply this number into your 2 theta. So it is very important that this number should go to the front. So I will get 4 because I'm factorizing the 2 out with and multiply with the 2 outside here. So I got 4, 1 minus cos 2 theta. Okay? So when you use this formula, I've explained in my uh, video, differentiation of trigonometric function, this differentiation can come to the front. And it's actually safer to put the differentiation in front, like what I said here. If you put it behind, you tend to multiply this in, into the 2 theta, which is kind of dangerous. Okay, so please be careful when you work on that. So for this type of question, dx dt and dy d, uh, sorry, dx d theta and dy d theta will carry some marks. You might get one mark for dx d theta and one mark for dy d theta because it involves two different formulas in your differentiation. So please take note for equation like this, you must do your dx d theta and dy d theta because they might carry one or two marks here. Once dx d theta and dy d theta is done, we are going to combine it using the chain rule again. So I will get my chain rule ready and I'm going to simplify this function. So I will get 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by sine 2 theta. Now, this function is not done yet. This differentiation still can be simplified. In your same one, you have learned that cos 2 theta in the trigonometric function uh, syllabus, you have learned cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine 2 theta and sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. Well, what you are going to do next is you are going to apply that into the function, the differentiation of dy dx. So the place for cos 2 theta, 
I will change with 1 minus 2 sine to theta and the place for sine 2 theta, I'm going to change with 2 sine theta cos theta. Now, once that's done, I will minus the 1 over, so I will get this equation. Simplify the 2 and I will get sine 2 theta over sine theta cos theta where sine and sine theta, sine squared theta and sine theta can be simplified too. So I will get something like this. Now, remember, sine theta over cos theta is equal to tangent theta. So which means this dy dx, the final answer will be tangent theta. So we actually apply a lot of formula to solve this one question. I hope you will practice because practice makes perfect. Please consider subscribing if you like all my videos. Click the bell button and you will be notified whenever a new video is up. Share this with your friend. Give me a like if you love it. And we will talk about second derivative of parametric functions in the next video. See you. Bye.